Are you wanting more people on the internet and within your community to know who you are so they do business with you? That's exactly what we're diving into today. We sit down with Trent Warner with Strategic Brand Builders. We're gonna dive in how to optimize SEO. And we're not just talking high level here. He gives you the exact how to, or he's gonna share a new AI tool called surfer.ai. He's gonna give you information on how to get industry updates that's going on in your specific area so that you don't have to go out and look for them and much, much more. We're going to talk about the compounding interest of CRMs and how you're sitting on hundreds of thousands of dollars right now. And he's going to give you the exact strategy to use to start converting more people in your CRM to dollars and paying customers. With that being said, let's start the show. Hey, welcome to the Insurance Buzz. We are your host, Michael and Courtney Weaver. And today we've got a very special guest, marketing guru, Trent Warner with Strategic Brand Builders. Trent, what's going on? How are you? Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, man, absolutely. We're, uh, We're pumped today. Any way we can talk about helping agents drive more business to their agency, I'm all in, baby. Let's go. Let's get right into it. How did you start or get into marketing before we start talking about the big mistake that we're seeing insurance agents make in their messaging? Yeah, actually, an independent insurance broker in Manhattan really tipped the scale for me. So I got my foot in the door with a small agency and I was blogging. Uh, One day this owner came to me and they're like, I get it. We're writing these things. What's it doing for my business? And that spiraled me down this rabbit hole of Google Analytics that spiraled into me like working at bigger agencies and then coming back and starting my first agency with that insurance brokerage owner. And he was my first subset of clients and that really kicked everything off for me. So I was a big SEO nerd, hated the keyword stuffing, really latched on to like great copywriting, getting people to make buying decisions. It was the catalyst for everything. So I'm in the second phase of my marketing, like owning marketing businesses and like that journey. Right now I'm a fractional CMO and I run a marketing strategy firm. So I am the biggest marketing nerd you'll meet and I'm happy to chop it up about insurance brokerages. The least sexy. (laughs) (laughs) But they can do it in a really effective way and, and I love working with them because I think that it's unsexy because it's so complicated. And I think that there's a great opportunity to stand out by making it applicable. So let's go for it. Well, so let's dive into it. So before we start talking about the biggest mistake that insurance agents make in their copy, I would love to know four insurance agency owners that are still running their own yeah. SEO. How can they, like what tips would you have for them to pay attention to, to maximize their online presence and driving consumers to them? Mm-hmm. So there's a few different things in there. I'd say like, let's simplify what the process is, right? And let's back engineer towards conversions. So what comes before a conversion, right? It's some level of engagement. They have to fill out a form. They have to give up their contact information. It's like, well, what comes before that? It's like, you need traffic to something where people can fill out their information. And what comes ahead of traffic? It's visibility, right? So. If business owners were to put that linearly, it's like focus on increasing the visibility of your keywords. So you need to write towards keywords. You need to start to get impressions on those keywords. You need to rank in the first 100 pages of Google for that keyword. And then you go up and you go like, how do I get higher visibility? How do I increase my page rank on that keyword, which will inevitably lead to traffic, right? So keywords that we're referencing here would be like insurance near me, car insurance, home insurance. Is that what you're talking about when you say keyword? Yeah. Products okay. or services, right? Like those are your root keywords. So those are what I would call like a pillar page keyword. And then there's, if you read through like a pillar page, there's things where it's, you're adding more context and maybe you're like, Ooh, I'd love to like double click on that. Let's talk about EPLI insurance, right? And we were to say something about how it affects like a specific type of business. It's like, how can I go in and learn more? It's like, we'll write a page on that. Maybe it's a longer tail keyword. And that longer tail keyword should be a hyperlink on the pillar page. 
And that longer tail keyword blog should link back to the EPLI page. Because if you're reading that longer tail keyword, maybe that's the way that you found the website originally. It's like, well, I want to learn more on this. So go to the product page. It's the web of a website, right? It's the interconnectiveness of the topics. And I think a lot of people miss that. Yeah, not to get into like the details or nerd out on this too much, but how would you, how would an agent even go about ranking higher, like to get in the top 100? Like, is it writing blogs or what, what is that? There's so many tools. I, I'll give you like a very simple cost-effective tool that anybody can buy. It's not going to break their budget. It's called surfer.ai. And it's an AI tool that focuses on SEO. So you can plug your page in there and it'll give you a score one to a hundred of your page quality. And then it'll give you some more information on it. Like what are semantically related keywords associated with this individual keyword? And often like common way I explain this is think about making an apple pie. Like the recipe is the page itself. And if you were to talk about like the different kinds of apples that you can make, like that's a semantically related keyword. The types of pie crust, semantically related keyword. Uh, whether you're going to cook it in a regular oven or if you're gonna be like a Gen Zer and do it in an air fryer, right? Like semantically related keyword. And that's kind of what I'm talking about when I say like the hyperlinks on pages. Like you could write an entire blog on the different kinds of apples for an apple pie. You can mention it briefly on the landing page that talks about the recipe, but go in detail on another page. Right. So with Surfer AI, right, it's going to say, like, here's the keywords that you used within the content. Here's some of the missing keywords that the top three articles are putting in their content. Here's some different ways that you can put content you've already written and link that to the page that you're talking about building upon. It consolidates all of this information in a very streamlined and task oriented process. So I think about, like, what are your main drivers? Uh, is it like a specific product that you're trying to sell? And then from there, it's like, how do I build up the visibility and traffic of that page by leveraging better content on the page itself and more semantically related content in the blog? So when we're talking about keywords, because some of our agents, they don't have the liberty to expand their SEO, like a captive agent and, a, and an insurance broker play in different fields a little bit. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about keywords, is there any other way that you can leverage those keywords, whether it's your social, whether it's through something else that will help increase your visibility? Yeah. So I don't think like marketing is one size fits all, right? Like you should obviously do your tests with different marketing strategies and see what works best for your business. Some people, it's an uphill battle to get them on social. And it's like, okay, like then what else can you do? Is it like networking events? Is it like the website? So I am very pragmatic when it comes to marketing. I'm like, not every business should be doing SEO. Uh, it's a great tool if you're, if it's like built for your type of business. But if you want to do something in relation to SEO, which I think is what your question is, you can write like a LinkedIn article about it, even as a captured agent. LinkedIn articles do have SEO value. Like, is it going to be the thing that tips the scale? Or are you going to outrank travelers home insurance for the <laughs> keyword travelers home insurance with a LinkedIn article? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> funny enough, I've done it on a blog for one of my clients where I saw that people kept coming to the website and, you know, they kept asking for travelers insurance. I'm like, well, let's just outrank them. So we did that for one of my clients and it was great, right? But I don't think marketing is a one size fits all. So other ways that you can increase your visibility are like different social platforms. Some people it's pulling teeth to do video. So it's like, yeah, I'm not gonna recommend Instagram for you. Maybe it's LinkedIn. Maybe if you're in like the B2C space, it's actually Facebook. Like the Facebook algorithm wants other people to see your content. Whereas LinkedIn, you're kind of, <laughs> you kind of have like a leash on you in a sense where you know, maybe you'll get to 10% of your first connections. Maybe you'll get to 1% of your second connections. And to really get past escape velocity, it's kind of like a battle there. But I, I still think LinkedIn articles have a place, especially if it's like a B2B framework. Okay. We're going to get into it because you just kind of teased a little bit about the mistake. And if we're, we're still in alignment of what, what we think it is. So you said that 
you decided to outrank travelers. Now, if I am listening to this and I am an insurance agent, I'm going, skirt, wait a minute. I thought we were on the same team here. So travelers is its own brand. So let's talk a little bit about what you see from like humans talking to humans Mm -hmm. in the marketing realm of where insurance agents are missing the mark. Yeah. So general disclaimer here, I largely work with independent insurance brokerages, right? So, and I've seen in the past working with marketing folks at carriers, the recommendations that they give independent insurance brokerages build up the carrier themselves and left is the same way, brother. Captain is the same way, man. They've got like a freaking agency force. It's like, Hey, let's promote the shit out of this company, man. Like, (laughs) but you're forgetting to promote yourself. (laughs) Yeah. So think about like the social books that you get from a carrier, right? Like maybe it's a logical next step for a captured agent that's with travelers to put up travelers' social media content. It's not a disjointed brand journey, right? But if you're an independent insurance brokerage solely promoting travelers, you're like, is this your brand? Did you just like repost this thing? Like, who am I working with? Are you just going to send me to travelers? then shouldn't I just go directly to travelers? Like, what is the thing here, right? So I think at the end of the Hold day- up. You just said something extremely important that I do not want it to just go overlooked. Did you just hear that? Mm-hmm. Like, should I work with him or should I just go directly to the insurance company itself? I hope everybody just heard that. This is a really important yeah. piece that nobody's talking about. So thank you, Trent. All right. Yeah. And there's other things with that, right? So it's like, if you were to go directly to the carrier, you can get a quote right on the website. So speed and efficiency, it's like, yeah, they could do that. But I'm sure everybody on this, in this podcast that's listening knows that there's things that you do that's very different than going directly to a quoting platform. There's the customization, there's really understanding user needs and everything else, right? When it comes to promoting your brand as a human to human, I think that we can all pull from personal experiences and I can give like an email example. I can give a social media example. Um, I don't care about brands on social media. I just don't. 99% of the time it's sell, 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 maybe a drop of value. And working with a human is the exact inverse. It's value, 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 maybe a little sale, right? So I think that we as humans need to just create more value for our audience or what is the point in them following you, right? Your podcast is a great example. Like if you go on to your LinkedIn, it is value, 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 value. Maybe you talk about like, oh, I have this sales academy, right? And I think that that's so important and so many people miss the mark. So if you're just regurgitating this thing that you get from a carrier, you slap it on your Facebook, you call it a day, you might as well have not even posted it at all. And you're probably diluting your actual reach and people's perception of who you are and what you do. I just, I can't help. Boo. If that's all you post, (laughs) boo. (laughs) No one wants to see that. Like, and here's the other thing. Like if the only engagement you get is from your peers, you're also missing the mark here. You're not targeting your peers. You're targeting consumers trying to convert. The, I, I believe this is the goal here to try to convert to quotes so you get new customers. So my question would be, if I'm listening to this and I'm like, yes, I'm in on this because I am the same way. Like, I don't I don't want to follow brands. I want to follow founders and I want to follow people. I want to follow people that are, I would actually be connecting with. How do I show up? What is value exactly? And how do I not mm. show my entire personal life. Like I'm an insurance agent. I'm on social media purely to convert. Like Mm -hmm. I will give value, but I don't want it to become my job. So what exactly should I be posting? So the simplest way to do this is I'm old school. I do pen and paper, right? I have a sales call. I extract questions that they had or things that they had that like were unclear. Maybe I need to go like, yeah, no, I understand. Like, that's what you want. But like, Here's what I would recommend instead. I just write all of that down and then I just post that, right? It's like common questions that people have, FAQs. How can you go, you know, someone reached out to me and they talked to their neighbor about what their neighbor was paying for insurance. And like, here's how I explained that 
you guys just have different coverage. You should be looking at coverage options different because you're a different person than what they are. Like, yeah, I think that there's so many interesting tidbits that you're just too close to realize that it's interesting, right? So that's one way is like just frequently ask questions and, and tell a story with it. That's like a very low lift thing to do. Another Pause. thing that I think is interesting. When you say tell a story with it, explain that a little bit. What do you mean by that? Yeah. So everything, if you think about like great stories, there's like an incentive and an antagonist, right? Like there's something that someone's trying to accomplish and there's something that's stopping them from getting there. All great stories, right? Like you could take Harry Potter as an example. <laughs> it's, it's a funny, he's just trying to like live his life and then there's this evil wizard coming to attack him, right? Um, so just tell a good story. I don't know. And also the idea that there's no hooks in any of this. Michael, you love LinkedIn. Would you ever imagine not writing like a killer hook to start? Like, how do you get someone to click the read more? There's a <laughs> multitude of ways to do it. And if you just start out with this bland vanilla thing, no one's hitting Seymour because no one cares. How do you make them care about what you have to say? Mm, I have an example. <laughs> it can be as simple as like, a client reached out about their neighbor's policy. Weird. Here's how you can't compare yourself to your neighbor, right? Like, yep. okay, that's interesting. There's so many ways. You can use ChatGPT. Like, there's an infinite number of ways that maybe take a little bit more effort than just writing, like, stream of consciousness content. And that's, that's such a good one because rates, yeah. rates get thrown around so much out there. Yeah, everybody's different. Everybody has different coverages. Everybody has different vehicles. Every so this topic right here is something that if I'm listening to this, I'm writing a post on this right now. And if I'm writing a post on this and I'm going to leverage ChatGPT, I'm going to go ahead and write the post. I'm going to put it in ChatGPT and I'm going to say, give me 10 killer hooks specifically targeting this person for this post. And I'm going to mm, see what she... Incorporating AI. Oh, yeah, baby. Woo! And then obviously I'm going to add my own spit on it, but that that's how I would, you saying leverage chat GPT, that's exactly how I would do that. I would take that story and plug it right in. There's so many fun ways to leverage AI too, like rewrite the hook as this person in this movie, right? Like rewrite this hook as Ryan Reynolds in whatever, right? Like there's so many fun ways to use AI and Deadpool. I think that Deadpool definitely, <laughs> right? let's go. <laughs> It would be so fun. And you can have fun with content. Like content doesn't need to be this hyper serious thing. The shelf life on it is pretty low. Like just experiment, right? You putting up that like generic post from a carrier, no one's seeing it anyway. So don't get like in your head and have all this pride in it to start. I have this concept of your first 100 reps are crap. So mm -hmm. get through your first 100 reps. Like with intention, right? Like experiment. And then after that, then hold yourself accountable. But you kind of have to get through this, this rep range first. It's like, if you were to walk into a random gym and you're like, I'm gonna go squat two plates. It's like, you've never squatted before. You're going to kill yourself, <laughs> right? You're gonna collapse. <laughs> yeah. Buckle. So, <laughs> so you your reps in. Another easy thing, if like, if you're struggling with FAQs, maybe you don't have like as much sales volume as the next person, you can go on Google Alerts, and you can set up so that once a week, you get all of the news sent to your inbox in one email about things going on with insurance in your area, right? So back during COVID, all of these like lumber prices and everything else skyrocketed, which caused insurance to go up, blah, blah, blah. Like make that into a post. Like why insurance is more costly this year than last year? Why are your rates gonna go up this year? Right, like just explain that. And you can aggregate all this news so you're not going to Insurance Journal and Chubb and all these other places to kind of like aggregate data on your own, just Google Alerts. Once a week, put in, in quotations, the words that you want. Maybe it's small business insurance. If you're in New York, small business insurance, location New York, once a week, that's your Google Alert. And then you just get that every Friday. I had one, and this is back before like the Netflix movie came out. Every Friday before my team meeting, I would get all of the week's news on the keyword Florida man, right? And I, that would be like my icebreaker for my Friday meeting with my team is like, what is your favorite Florida man story, right? So it was, it was a fun thing to do, but it, it got me into this framework of like, how can I aggregate more news stories to be in my inbox at great times?
Yeah. It's really good. So we talked about before we hit record when we were preparing, we talked a little bit about the concept of compounding interest with your mm-hmm. CRM. Explain a little bit about that. Yeah. So I think insurance is this wildly interesting space because you know when people have the possibility of buying again, right? For a lot of businesses, you don't really know. Like if you're in real estate, your CRM for real estate, how many times can you resell those people after they buy a house? It's really, really low. Like your CRM isn't going to be as effective as with insurance. I know that if someone fills out a lead form on a website in, you know, April of this year, if I reach out to them in February or March of next year, I have a chance to get ahead of them before their policy is up for renewal, right? So I think it's really interesting as these insurance companies spend more and more money on marketing and increase their lead volume year over year, they have the effect of compound interest because they can market to every single person even if they didn't close. Another thing with insurance that's interesting is if someone leaves especially if you're an independent insurance brokerage, it's rarely because of something you did. It's like their rates went up with a carrier and maybe they just jumped ship, right? It's probably not your customer experience, although anybody in insurance can improve their customer experience. But it's probably not something you did, so the ability to remarket them next year is it's pretty high. So when I first started out, I inherited a couple accounts. Like I took over their marketing. They were with a CRM. They were using like a HubSpot. HubSpot's great, but it creates a duplicity of like operations in the sense that it doesn't talk to your agency management software. I think the API to get AMS 360 is like 30 grand a year, which is bananas. So I kind of like steer people into a CRM that works with their AMS, right? Agency Zoom is a good one. But these win back campaigns are interesting because you probably have like hundreds of thousands of dollars just sitting in your CRM. Maybe some people are leveraging them, like just leveraging them. Maybe some people are doing a great job leveraging them. And a subset, just they're like, CRM. (laughs) They just just (laughs) don't get it, right? So the first thing I would say is like, have a CRM that talks to your AMS. Have these win back campaigns. And you can set it on like the date someone reached out, reach out 11 months later, right? Like that's your first win back campaign. And then... Don't have that email come from your brand. Like it shouldn't be like info at your insurance brokerage.com. It should be from the person who would be quoting them, right? So Mm. um, maybe if they already talked to someone, it's like the lead owner. If no one talked to them and they just filled out a form, just place someone, if it's like a homeowner's insurance lead, Just place someone in personal lines on that. Have like a very well-written email, human to human, no jargon, like make a personal connection with them over email and try to get like a policy review on the schedule and make it easy for them to do that. Whether that's like including your calendar link or just saying like, hey, send me your policy and I'll do it. But try to eliminate all of the like menial steps in between like sending the email and providing the quote. Amen. Complicated buying process typically equates to zero dollars made. So we want to make it easy. We want to make it simple. Yeah, frustration. So, and what you're talking about here is you're talking about X dates and then you're talking about win back campaigns as well with with clients that leave you. So if I'm a personal lines agent right now, one practice we always had is if we talked to somebody, quoted them, they didn't work with us, we're calling them again in five months on that auto renewal. And I'm going to be opening up. I mean, this is this is the exact same thing we talk about in Weaver Sales Academy and train on on a weekly basis. But I'm opening up that conversation with, hey, your rates just increased because I can guarantee in this market that we live in today, doesn't matter if it's the homeowner side, the auto side, whatever you're calling on, the rate has increased with any company out there. So that is a great hook. I mean, talking about hooks on LinkedIn, like, hey, the reason I was giving you a call is your renewal dates in a month, your rates just went up. I've been helping the last nine out of 10 people I've talked to from the company you're currently with. I'd love to help you out today. Are you still at 112 Main Street? So automatically assuming that conversation Emails. So this would be a question I would ask you, Trent, on email copy. What are you doing to to try and hook that customer, build that relationship in a very short, sweet, to the point type of email? Because in my experience, long emails just don't work. Like if they can't read it on their cell phone in about five seconds, 
they're pressing delete or getting on to the next thing. Yeah, I think that when people reach out in email, it's they write a novel. They don't direct like your uh, field of vision to the important things. Rarely are insurance, like people in insurance, like putting bold text in an email. It's kind of just like stream of consciousness, big paragraph talking about the brand, like quick thing on, like, do you need a quote? Like very surface level stuff. I would make it about them. Like you said, like, hey, your insurance is coming up for renewal. Are you seeing an increase in your rate? Great opening thing. Put in bold, are you seeing an increase in your rate? Would love to catch up if you have some time. Here's a link to my calendar. If you're too busy, send over your policy and I'll see what I can do. Very short and sweet. Nothing about like, hey, I work for such and such (laughs) insurance brokerage. Like they can see in your email address where you work. Like let's not, (laughs) let's not split the atom here and just get straight into the point because nobody has time anyway. Right. Like this should be something where they can say, yes, a couple clicks done. I'm on the calendar. I know that I'm meeting you next Wednesday. Right. Make it easy to work with you. Like don't make people jump through hoops. All right. I got to ask you, Trent. I got to ask you, because this is a question I just had from an agent. So I'm hoping I steered them in the right direction. They said, Michael, I'm trying to email a copy. Like, what would you say? So in very similar to what I just said. So in the header, I was like, your insurance rates just went up in like all caps. All right. And then the body, all that said was, hey. Would it make sense if we connected for just a few minutes to talk about why your rates went up and see if I could help you out? Yeah. Short and sweet. Keep it simple, right? Value oh, to God. them. <laughs> it's value to them. And I mean, that's like, that's the point here. And if you are to send a second email, for the love of God, don't just say just following up. You are not making any differentiation between you and the 300 emails I got last week of a lead gen agency, right? Like, give me something more. If you can see the carrier they're with or like what they're focused on or whatever else, like add value, don't just say just following up or wondering your thoughts or something else, right? Like that thing should be like a bigger pressure point in that second email if the first one didn't work. This has been great, Trent. This is so good. I mean, I've got so many notes, so I want to just go over just a few of the bullet points I wrote down today. So number one, Surfer Surfer AI, so surfer.ai, using your frequently asked questions or maybe the things you're finding out on the discovery conversation with prospects or customers, and then writing about that and telling a story while writing to help sell it. And then utilizing Google alerts to keep you up to date with what's going on in your area with certain topics within the insurance industry. Am I missing anything here? Just don't write that. I hope this email finds you well. Email. <laughs> <laughs> human to <follow> human. <laughs> like, would you ever say that in a conversation? Like, just email the way you talk, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think human to human is such a differentiator between like, you as a business owner or a sales agent and a carrier, like carriers are these faceless entities. You are a human with a face and an opinion and value. Like bring that to the forefront of what you're doing. Just like, let's get back to human to human things. Yes. A freaking men, baby, because here, look on the buzz, we're always talking about human to human is so important because right now in the insurance industry, transactional sales has really taken over the last decade and humans just aren't, Customers don't want that shit anymore. Like if you treat somebody like a transaction, they're leaving you like a transaction. And so when you get down to what insurance is, it's a very relationship-based business, human to human connection. So I love that you're saying that, Trent. If somebody wanted to work with you, follow you, connect with you, Trent, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, they can check out my website. We're in the middle of a quick redesign. It's called strategicbrandbuilders.com. I'm also very active on LinkedIn backslash Trent hyphen Warner on LinkedIn, always accessible, always down to talk marketing. Oh yeah. I love it. Trent, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, this has been awesome. And for all of those of you that tuned in today, we would love to know what your biggest takeaway was. So shoot us a text 816-727-7610. Yes, you are texting us. It's not an AI built out system. We will be the ones responding. But other than that, we appreciate you as, as always. Time and attention are by far the most important and valuable assets that we all have. We appreciate you spending time with us today. Go out, make it great. Trent, thanks again, brother. Thank you. 